before all of that, though, as the Israel-Hamas conflict continues to dominate the headlines, we can cross live now to ITV News International Affairs editor Raggy Omar. Raggy's in Jerusalem. Thanks for joining us this morning, Raggy. What is the latest there? Pleasure. Well, good morning, uh, Craig. Um, the situation today is that the Israeli military say that after nearly four days of horrific fighting uh, between Israel and Hamas, that they have secured the border between Israel and Gaza, which was penetrated multiple times on Saturday morning by Hamas, leading to the deaths. I believe now that figure is 900 Israelis and over 2,500 wounded. Um, Israeli uh, warplanes have continued ferocious airstrikes throughout Gaza. I've been in Gaza multiple times, Craig, whilst there have been uh, airstrikes, and they are terrifying to behold. But this is on an altogether different scale. In one three-hour period, 240 targets, multi-story buildings right the way through Gaza were hit. They continued through the day, they continued through the night, and the Israeli air forces have said they will continue uh, with what they call extremely intense bombardment. At the same time, as we know, um, uh, there are about probably 100 Israeli hostages taken from Israel into Gaza. Their whereabouts are unknown. And um, the, this airstrike will have um, ramifications for them. But Israel is saying they are going to continue and their purpose is one and one and alone, and that is to destroy Hamas from ever threatening Israel again. There is also a siege around Gaza, no electricity, no water, no food, no fuel. Um, that has inevitably led to what I would call a rising anxiety within the international community about the humanitarian situation, where there are hundreds of Palestinians who have died as a result of the military action. But Israel is being extremely direct, saying no one, in the words of one of their military spokesmen, can expect us to feed and um, provide power to the enemy that's killed the largest number of Jews since the Holocaust. So the situation remains very, very tense, but I think we're all preparing for a major Israeli ground assault into Gaza, which will have huge ramifications. There are also an unknown number of Brits inside Gaza. We know the family, uh, the relatives of the First Minister of Scotland, Hamza Yusuf, has relatives there. There's concern about how they get out. They can't come through Israel, of course. The Israelis are saying that anyone who wants to get out needs to go to the southern border with Egypt. Raggy, thank you so much for joining us and take care of yourself out there. Really is a horrific situation. Thanks for your time this morning. Um, Matthew and Giles, thanks so much this morning. Uh, look, it's a really tough way to mm -hmm. start the morning for a lot of people out there. And, uh, and the pictures have been just horrific to watch, um, terrifying. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be solved anytime soon. In fact, it's just escalating. It's getting worse and worse every single day, isn't it? Well, there are two, in a sense, there are two issues here. One is the horror of what happened at the weekend, the uh, vile Hamas attack and the slaughter that came as a result of it. That is horrific and condemned universally. Beneath that is a problem that's been around for perhaps millennia. I certainly remember as a young reporter going to Jerusalem in the aftermath of the Six-Day War, the end of the 1960s. And it was as alive then as it is now, the situation of, of how do we resolve, how does the world resolve where the Jewish people are to live and where Palestinian people are to live? Can they live side by side? And that's, in a sense, the long-term issue. This has brought it into focus again. So we condemn the horror of what happened this weekend, but we're all concerned about what does the future hold and can there be an international uh, resolution to this? Uh, and Matthew, the you know, in this news review, we skirt across the main headlines of the day. We're not going to be able to delve deep into the history of this conflict. It's a political conflict, it's geopolitical, and it's seemingly endless. It's deadlocked. But we should really just focus on the, on the, the cost of human life here the, from both sides. It's a human cost. Um, the attack at the Supernova Festival is just... Uh, it's, it's, it's still almost beyond the pale to the images that we've seen of, of people being shot point blank and such like. Israel fights back very hard. We know that through history. And they are, I think, in grave danger under Netanyahu of making a horrific situation even worse because of the situation in Gaza. You've got close to two million people. They're not all terrorists. They may support Hamas. Hamas is de democratically elected, but nevertheless viewed as a, as a terrorist organisation. But what you could, could end up here is a sort of genocide. I mean, there's a concern that the Palestinian people are going to be eradicated. 
And, and it, it is a war crime under the Geneva Convention to, to deliberately target civilians. And that seems to be what you could say is happening in, in Gaza. And I, I'm pretty sure that what Raggy said is right, that we will see military incursions from, from Israel into Gaza. And what happens to the people there, I do not know. Children, do children, not know. children from both Hundreds sides of the already, community yes. dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Innocent children. It's just awful, isn't it? And, it, and there's no... I mean, there, there is no sign of any resolution to this problem, despite the best interests of the UN, which has been fairly... You know, it makes resolutions that neither side comply with. It is possible, I suppose, that out of the worst episode yet in, in the conflict out there, that perhaps focus will come in the international community and, and within... And not everybody... Not every Israeli supports what Netanyahu is doing. You know, there, there, are, there are Jewish people that believe in, in a free Palestine. But I just hope that that out of this carnage, some positivity will come and that maybe out of this bloodshed, that resolution... But I, I, if you ask me, if, would I put, put my house on it? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Giles. It's so horrific and it's so heightened now. The world has to respond. The world has to respond, but the world doesn't quite know how to respond. Well said. We know that we can all condemn what happened at the weekend and we can all be apprehensive about the response to it while being in full sympathy with the need, the feeling amongst people in Israel that we must respond and respond hard. Uh, and, of course, people at home now are feeling this passionately. I think everyone is agreed about the horror, but people are not agreed about the way ahead, how we can get these two people to, even, to coexist uh, peacefully. Even in the EU... There's moves within some member states, they want to cut aid to, to ordinary Palestinian people. And as of last night, as far as I'm aware, both France and Spain have said they will fight that. They believe that aid, EU aid should continue to go to the Palestinian people. So even within the EU club, there's no resolution, there's no uh, agreement there. It, it, it's... it's yeah. My heart goes out to, I mean, uh, yeah. to, the, to the innocents on yes. both sides. That, yes. That's, uh, it's that's sad. Yeah. It's just terribly, terribly sad. It's yeah. heartbreaking. You watch the news and it's heartbreaking. And we have to be so grateful to reporters like Raggy who are out there well said, giving yeah. as balanced a view as is possible yeah. and actually are there. I, I trust him. Uh, and so I feel if you want to know what's happening, uh, actually listen to Raggy and he will report it fairly. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh